Hello and welcome to our channel. And welcome to Bath Chew Valley Caravan Park. That's weird. Oh, I've never seen our caravan being towed. It's like that scene in Harry Potter. Is that what my hair looks like from the back? We've been here for three nights so far, so we've got a really good feel for the site and the local area. In this video, we'll give you a site tour, a review, and just a sprinkling of things that you can do in this beautiful part of Somerset. But first, we're off to a local eatery at nearby Chew Valley Lake for a scrummy bite to eat, followed by a stroll around the lake with Dozer. Good boy, come on in. One of the great things about this site is its proximity to Chew Valley Lake just 20 minutes walk or five minutes in the car. Chew Valley Lake is actually a reservoir and it's the fifth largest artificial lake in the UK. It was created in the early 1950s and provides much of the drinking water for Bristol. The lake is also used for recreation such as dinghy sailing and fly fishing for which it is well renowned. When water levels are low, you may even catch a glimpse of Morton, a sleepy hamlet that was flooded in the creation of the reservoir. Back at the turn of the 20th century, a young girl called Catherine Brown lived in Morton with her family. One day, Catherine went missing, and after an extensive search into the night, there was no trace of her. Her mother, anxiously waiting at home for news, was delighted when Catherine walked into the family home, dripping wet, but apparently unharmed. She would not answer her mother's questions about where she'd been and went straight upstairs. Later, her parents could find no sign of her in the house. The next morning, Catherine's body was found in the moat around Stratford Mill. She was said to have been dead for at least 24 hours. Almost a hundred years later, the ghostly figure of a dripping wet young girl was sighted walking along the B3114, which runs alongside Chew Valley Lake. Her dripping wet apparition was spotted by nine separate people that night. <laughs> Just next to the car park at the north end of the lake is Salt and Malt. And if you like your fish and chips, this is the place for you. You can dine inside or take away. We decided to take away and enjoy our fish and chips under the shade of a tree overlooking the lake. <laughs> scampi and chips. Oh, scampi and chips. Oh, you did me the solid. I knew you'd like scampi and chips. And, although, are you going to be jealous? Fried halloumi and chips. Oh my, I, I am jealous. Are you? Yeah. Aha. We are back now from our lovely lunch and full and happy. So how about that site tour? Bath Chew Valley Caravan Park is an adults only touring park, which is part of the Tranquil Parks Network and is affiliated with the Caravan and Motorhome Club. It's about 30 minutes drive from both Bath and Bristol and just 25 minutes from the beautiful town of Wells. The fully serviced, hard standing pitches are set among well established and cared for planted areas and lush green lawns, 
all arranged to ensure that each pitch is spacious and uncramped. One unique feature of this site is that you don't actually take your caravan to your pitch with your car. The staff do it for you with their dinky little tractor. It's a nifty little arrangement and actually it's both a positive and a little bit of a drawback. The positive is it's pretty stress-free. They're really helpful, very skillful and know exactly what they're doing. It's also a positive because the site isn't cluttered up with cars perched at the end of each pitch. However, the drawback is that if you need something from the car, you've got a short walk to go and get it, dependent on where your pitch is. It didn't actually bother us that much. However, if your pitch is at the other end of the site, or indeed you're less able, that might be a little bit of a drawback for you. However, there is one accessible pitch which is right next to the car park. And this is our pitch. We are on a fully serviced pitch, which has set us back the princely sum of £47 a night. Nice lot of space all the way around the pitch. Hard standing, reasonably level, and all of the utilities are down this side. And you can see I've tried my best to be neat and tidy this time as well. You've got your water and electric and your grey waste point over here. Toilet and shower blocks over here, they're all individual cubicles, some are bigger than others, but they're all immaculately clean and very well kept. So this is the larger one, and you've got your sink, shower, toilet, hand dryer, hair dryer, it's very nice. Here is the chemical toilet disposal room, um, nice and clean and actually a good height surface making that job a little bit easier. A little sink to wash your hands too. And in here we have a utility room which has a few washing up stations, some tourist information, a freezer, washing machines and tumble dryers and an iron and ironing board. Here's a station for drinking water, emptying your grey waste and for waste and recycling. Now if you are a connected soul, one thing to note is that we have not had very good phone signal at all and certainly no mobile internet. So we have had to use the site Wi-Fi which is not free. And as you can see here, there are certain pricing scales dependent on how long you want it for and how many devices you want to connect. We have had um, three days, two devices, um, which was costing us £7.50, but it's just run out. So I'm going to need to spend another £3 for 24 hours worth of internet access. Time to enjoy some of the Somerset cheese and cider that we picked up on our travels. Dozer wants to know who is going to pay the cheese tax. <laughs> We're just taking Dozer now for an afternoon stroll along the on-site dog walk. It's fairly small. I would say it's probably about 200 metres and yep. it's quite narrow half grass, half stony, and your dogs do need to be on a lead the whole time. The dog walk starts at the gate just there. You come all the way along here, and then you go along this part here, and it ends just up there. It's a shame that the area next to it, which is nicely wooded and there's a kind of winding, meandering path through it, is not dog friendly.
There's a fair bit to do in the local area, most of which requires you to drive. But if you bring your bikes, I think this is a good place to get out and about. There is a recreational path around Shoe Valley Lake, which is pedestrian friendly, cycle friendly, and is also accessible. And the scenery there is really pretty. And up there, you'll also find Salt and Malt, the place where we went for our fish and chip lunch today, which was very good. And it's also a really well reviewed dog friendly pub walking distance in the village called the Red Line. But we haven't managed to get there on this trip. Time for a site review. What did you think of the site itself? I think the site is really nice. It's really well kept, it's clean and tidy, the site staff are very very friendly. I would say it's a little bit above an average level of site. I like the fact that it's a tranquil park and mm. that it is adults only so that is def definitely in its favour. Yep. What did you think of having the caravan towed to the pitch? Well, the thought of that at first seemed a little strange. However, it was a really swift and efficient process. Um, Paul towed it in on his tractor, he sighted it really quickly, got it level, um, and in hindsight, it kind of does beat that awkwardness of uh, pulling your car and your caravan onto your pitch yourself, mm. either trying to back it in or unhook it and using the motor mover and then having everybody spectating at that particular sport. Um, so all in all, actually, I don't mind that. Mm. The one drawback I think is, well, it's both a drawback and a positive, is having the car in the car park, not on your pitch. It makes for a tidier site um, without cars everywhere, um, but it is a short walk to get things from the car or to walk to the car and if you have a lot of stuff like us or an elderly dog um, <laughs> it can be a bit challenging. What about the area? I don't know, I did this question, this didn't come up on our list of proposed questions. So how about the area? The site is about half an hour from Bath and about half an hour from Bristol so it's in a good location if you want to explore both of those areas. Um, check out our video by the way of some dog friendly things that you can do near Bath to find out a little bit more about what we got up to while we were here. Um, what did you think of the facilities? Ah so that's a really good question. The facilities are clean they're up to a good standard they could just do with a bit of modernization i think we've had the bar set pretty high for us on some of the sites that we've stayed at recently um, so all in all perhaps it's unfair to measure them against those because they are really clean really well kept um, and they're just okay. Um, they're all individual cubicles. Um, so you've got your toilet and your shower in one cubicle. Um, that's both a bonus and uh, a drawback, I think, in some ways, but overall, pretty good. Well, that about does it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, leave us a comment, let us know. Would you come and stay here? and um, also give us some suggestions if you have any other sites uh, that you think we ought to try let us know but meanwhile thanks so much for watching thanks for watching see you in the next one take care bye bye